Alrighty, I am being told that the setup is finished and the run will be short starting shortly. So, without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and throw it over to Fumo Fumo Mailing, who's going to start the Mystic Quest 100% speedrun. Alright, hello everyone. As introduced, I am the runner for Final Fantasy Mystic Quest 100%. I am running remotely from Canada uh, on the East Coast. Uh, so uh, today I have myself and my commentary team. Uh, if you guys want to introduce yourselves as well. Uh, yeah, my name is uh, Possum Morpheus, a huge fan of Final Fantasy Mystic Quest and Fumo. Uh, so, so happy to see him get to run this. Definitely looking forward to it. And uh, Tibalt, you're up, friend. Yeah, I'm Dibble2010. I also run Final Fantasy Mystic Quest 100%. Excellent. All right. So, uh, I think we have a few donation wars going on. Specifically, uh, we have the menu color, uh, the HP display, and the name, which I will ask for. Uh, let's begin with a new game. So may I have the name for the run? Yeah, give me just one second for this refresh. Uh, okay, Benjamin's name for the run will be capital P B two J. All the letters are capital. All right, so capital P B two J. B two J. All right, perfect. Okay. So, now that we have our file uh, name, let's begin the run. I'll give a countdown in five, four, three, two, one, go. All right, so welcome to Final Fantasy Mystic Quest 100%. I like to call this run the any percent plus the rest. Uh, the rules of 100% are to collect all uh, key items, which includes uh, the non-consumable items, collect all spells, weapons, and armor. And we can't manipulate the inventory to remove any key items. We can add into them, which we're going to see a little bit later in the run. Uh, first, we have our main uh, boss, named Behemoth. This guy can be a, a, a little bit of a troll because uh, you can often lose to Behemoth uh, because you can miss a few times like I did here, but it takes around four hits to defeat him. Or if you get lucky, like I did with the critical hits, we can take him down in less than four. So that's pretty good. So we had like one miss. And I guess now it's time to find out what our display, HP display, and our menu color is. Uh, apologies, so here I we... did not realize I was muted yeah, the there. Tree uh, and... the... Current menu color is red with $35. Right. I will change this after Kaylee joins. Nice. All right. I will change the menu color right away. And how about the HP display? Here. All the HP red. display is on figure display for the moment. That is at $30 and scale is on 26. So are these rolling incentives? Can these right. be changed over the course of the run? Yep, let's roll them throughout the course of the run as we uh, finish off the crystals, crystal bosses like uh, Flameless Rex, Ice Golem, Pazuzu, and Dual Head Hydra. Sounds fantastic. Right, so I will keep you updated on member. how those change. Yep, sounds good. So we recruited our first party member, Kaylee, and we also grabbed the Cure spell. Uh, Let's 
head to back to the level forest and find out what we can do about this uh, this aging going on because this area looks like it's withered down. Yeah, and one really cool thing to point out about the uh, the town names uh, that I always found very interesting is we have uh, we have Foresta, the town of forests, uh, and you will see a, a theme in this game with very simple naming conventions. It's pretty fantastic. Uh, and, you yeah, know, you can infer we, the uh, elements. Ooh, a critical hit is lucky. That doesn't happen very often with Pen Benjamin. No, I think he was uh, slacking there a little bit earlier and getting constant misses. Doing his best impression it, of uh, a future character. It does happen from time to time. <laughs> All right. Here we have our first real boss, Minotaur. Although we can cheese him with life because uh, we can one-shot him. Because life in this game when it's cast offensively, uh, if they're not immune to the fatal status, they will uh, be defeated in one hit, like you see there. Although the caveat behind that is uh, White's magic spells that are used against enemies have a chance to miss. So that's something to keep in mind whenever we're uh, using White magic spells offensively. And I believe the hit rate of the life spell is based on the weapon you are currently holding for the actual accuracy of the uh, spell when you're using white like that. Yep. Yep. As you saw, Kaylee had to leave the party because she was poisoned by the Minotaur. And we had to move on, and we got our new party member, Tristan. So his weapon is a shuriken, which is shoot elemental. It has a not naturally high chance of missing and also uh, dealing critical hits as well. And we're going to hope that uh, Tristan does quite a few critical hits as we traverse through our first main dungeon, the Bone Dungeon. So for some of you that may, may not know, as you, you can see on the screen, we have so you know, our main character. So. Then we have Tristan on the right, who has a little auto above his shirk in there. And we, we constantly switch that between auto and manual. And that kind of comes in the case of letting the computer play for you on your partner's turn, or you can control them manually there yourself. And there are some interesting things that happen with auto that uh, we tend not to like. We also noticed that we ran away from free enemies. Uh, we don't have a clean way to deal with uh, free enemy uh, formations, so that's why we run away and hope for a better result. Uh, there we go. Uh, we're going to need uh, free enemy formations later because we're going to need to uh, duplicate one of the items, the consumable items we're gonna, we're gonna get soon, uh, which is the seed. And the way we duplicate I the items is we have to have our partner on manual. Uh, we have to then with our main character PB2J, we use the seed back out on the partner's turn and then run away. So it adds one back to the original count of the seeds we had, so which essentially adds plus one more seeds to our inventory. Yeah, as we progress through here, we're, we're always hoping for, you know, just a two or less, you know, enemy search. We can take those out in one turn if we don't miss. Um, after we get the seeds, 
if we run into a three, we can, you know, as we will mention, duplicate the seed. And it, it comes to having more seeds. What the seed actually does is your spell counter. It's like an ether from other uh, Final Fantasy. So you refresh all of your spell counters. Uh, there's, you only get three of them until halfway through the game. So being able to duplicate them allows you to use your magic more liberally. Yeah, it's also worth noting that uh, if you do get only solo encounters all the way through this first dungeon, you will end up at level three for the first boss, which is a very, very tough challenge, something you really don't want to have to deal with. Yep, luckily I got enough enemies, so that is not the case. So here we're coming towards our first big boss here, Flameless Rex. Oh, we got a critical hit, which is good. So Flameless Rex can be hurt with the Cure spell. So we'll depend on both Tristam and uh, Benjamin's Cure spell to do the bulk of the damage. Uh, we'll get a few. Uh, straight hits, uncritical hits with uh, Tristam here and there. It does add up over time, but we do need to watch out for Flame Wrist Rex's uh, Rip Earth attack, which hits multi-target. And it's pretty powerful in, if it hits single target. We need to also watch Tristam's HP, make sure it doesn't go below 100. But for safety's sakes, I'm going to use life to heal up the rest of Tristan's life. The life spell, that is. And keep going with uh, Flamer's Rex. And hopefully we get more critical hits. Yeah, the other thing we hope for in, in most of the boss fights is something of, a, of an empty turn against the boss. So like putting one of our people to sleep if we're immune to it, trying to silence us. The more times the enemy does nothing to us, uh, the better the actual fight goes. Ooh, that's a bit of unfortunate bad luck there. This does happen from time to time uh, that uh, we did get a bad turn order. One of the things that, that Mr. Quest likes to do is, uh, even if you do uh, end up losing a fight, you can just retry and you start the fight exactly where you started it last time. So there really isn't any harm of losing a fight, because uh, you just restart it right from where you left off. Yeah, and typically even in the, the best runs, you know, world record runs, runs etc., you're still looking at multiple deaths to bosses. Uh, there's basically never been a clean run all the way through just because of how heavy the RNG is in this run. Yeah, and you may think, oh, it's a Final Fantasy, you might be able to manipulate some of it. Uh, unfortunately, with, with Mystic Quest, we're able to see all of our fights. There is no actual seed manipulation, uh, so there's no step counter. We see all the fights, it's all RNG, there's no way to manipulate it. Alright, Flamers is down. Uh, now can I ask if there's any updates to the HP display or the menu color? We do not have any changes for the menu color or the HP display for the moment. Um, again, it's about a $5 difference if you want to overwrite one of those, so make sure to get those donations in. Sounds good. All right. So we have a little bit of downtime as we need to just backtrack through, but we do need to collect a few items on our way back. Uh, first is the Quake spell, which is in this little cave that I'm about to go into. And next is the Steel Shield. Otherwise, um, the team has the floor. Right. 
Yeah, so as we, we come through, we get the steel shield. And it, uh, it gives you a little bit of extra defense and also gives you some extra speed to uh, get more actions at the beginning of the fight. Um, as Tristan just left us, you know, all to our own to walk out. And after oh, we yes. leave here... That's, that's true. Although, it, it's just actually kind of a benefit for the next battlefield that we're gonna uh, fight. Or actually, our first battlefield. Yeah, so around you may have seen these little green tiles with cross swords on them. They are uh, what we call battlefields. Uh, in the speedrun, we only do uh, their minimum required, which is just four of them. And those four each hold their own special item or spell in some cases. Um, this first one here is going to hold our charm necklace. Just adds a little bit extra defense. Um, and we're gonna hope that we don't see any basilisks. Because um, the only way to one shot, one turn a uh, basilisk fight is to use quake. And it takes a lot of time for the quake spell. But other than that, we can just sit there and blow up the uh, the frogs and the trees with our bombs in one turn. And this is a perfect time if we have any donations for the host to read off. We do indeed. We have a $20 anonymous donation. Uh, we have a $25 donation from Secret Final Boss with no comment. We have a $15 donation from Air P. Wayne, again with no comment. We have a $10 donation from Circuit Main saying, I love all those chest comments while playing Trails in the Sky. Let's be sure to let everyone hear them and have a good laugh. That is, uh, of course, an incentive for uh, the upcoming Trails in the Sky run. Uh, we do have some very, very nice uh, incentives for this run as well. Again, I'd really like to see that fight Jin fight. We are currently, if my math is correct, uh, $325 off seeing that done. Uh, but how far into the run is that going to happen? Uh, we still have about uh, another hour, hour or so hour. before. All right, so but we're on the TR marks. So we got an hour and 45 minutes. I think we can make that happen. That, that should be pretty doable. Yeah, that should definitely uh, be we doable. We do have a 50. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, there's one. No, thing no, go ahead. That is the fenceless fights. Um, we only have three uh, black magic spell charges at this point, so we only have uh, like three quakes casts. So unfortunately, we'll have to spend an extra turn to defeat the basilisk. That's everything for me for for this segment. Yeah, that basilisk fight actually is the rare fight for this battle tile. Um, I know, boss, we know more information on that than I do. Yeah, that was one thing I wanted to touch on that. Uh... All of the encounters are basically done on kind of 34 frame uh, windows and that basilisk appears in the fewest number of those 34 frame windows as you cycle through. So that was pretty unlucky to see. I believe that was five of them. Uh, quite, quite, you know, typical marathon RNG, honestly. Yeah, so we, we got the elixir from, from Tristam as he left us in the bone dungeon. We're gonna give it to Kaylee here so she can heal up. And we get to go to our next location. Uh, we get to go into the focus tower, as it was mentioned by the old man that he only ever talks to us once and we, we never decide to talk to him again. We saw him there at the forest. We're gonna see him here again. And this entrance into the focus tower will be making multiple pass-throughs in this area. There he is, there's the old man. Yeah, don't need to talk to you. And as you can see here, this is where we end up using the sand coin we got from Blaze Rex. There is three other coins. One for the fire area, one for the water area, one for the wind area. And we're about to get our second person, probably my favorite person, uh, good old Phoebe. Who is just so useful. Yeah, I think I'm still a Kaylee fan myself because Phoebe is just so dang slow by the end of the run. Uh, Kaylee always is outspeeding everything, Phoebe is not, but for now she is absolutely amazing. 
now when she has the fire spell thunder spell and and thunder early game the, the magic in this game is very very useful um and having the wizard so there's three different types of spells in this game you have your white magic your black magic and then your wizard um the wizard spell being thunder really powerful um to have and so we're going to come into wintry cave here we got to get uh the libra crest so this is a counter if we didn't have the the frog there um if, if we would be able to keep phoebe on auto as long as all of the enemies are the same type and they are all the same weakness so if it was all scorpions there we could leave phoebe on auto and she will just flat out cast fire on everything even though some encounters can be taken out with an all cast of fire the, the ai doesn't really work to our advantage in that case yeah because um because there are uh two different enemy types uh, even though both are weak to fire uh phoebe's ai will focus only on one target at a time which is a little bit of an oddity but we, we work our way around that uh, for every encounter yeah it's kind of yeah, neat thing to happen uh, pretty neat later in the run when you'll see uh if you leave auto on phoebe will do some really weird things basically trying to learn what is effective and what is not effective. Uh, this would be especially true uh, in about 45 minutes or an hour when we're playing around in a giant tree or, uh, you know, like two hours from now when we're playing around in a couple of, uh, you know, towers where Phoebe will just do weird things and Kaylee would do weird things and they will try to learn as they go. But really, we don't want them learning because it usually ends in us dying. Yeah, so the other thing to note about the auto with the AI is that they will prioritize uh, anything that is under half health. So if we are under half health or if they're under half health, they'll immediately do a cure on their turn. If it, the, either of us have a status ailment, whether we're silenced or petrified, they will prioritize healing over damage. And this is a great fight to highlight something that is the biggest concern in a lot of this run. Uh, status ailments. Uh, they are brutal. Damage is normally not a concern. Raw damage is only a concern typically in boss fights. Uh, statuses such as confusion, petrify, are absolutely game-breaking. Not necessarily run-ending because you can just retry fights on the spot. But confusion in particular, like with these centaurs, is very scary if they double confuse your party, uh, especially if they outspeed uh, one, you know, either party member. It can be devastating. Like this. Yeah, unfortunately that did not work <laughs> out for me, but uh, I can still win this fight, thankfully. Yeah, so e even though push B to J, uh, BB to J is actually down and out, it doesn't matter we'll still get the experience in this fight and you automatically revive with one hp at the end of every fight uh, being petrified and confused do not persist through the end of a fight uh, only blind and poison persist after the fight As we come through here, we're just trying to get through these fights as quickly as possible. To, you know, either both of us taking one turn or just Phoebe just taking them out. Um, you always hope for less monsters because experience is really not needed. In some cases, it's actually at the, at the end of the game, you want to be within a certain level range for stat purposes for the end boss. If your stats are a little too high. Um, the actual end boss fight can go a little not the way you want it to but we'll get more into that as, as the uh, that comes up uh, 
So I like to use the axe to save a little bit of damage time, but uh, the caveat, as you saw, is it can't miss. Yeah, one thing to know is that the... So the things are, is the bombs will always hit. Uh, your spells can never crit the enemy. However, the enemy spells can crit you. So there's a bit of a disadvantage to the actual player. In that regard. Uh, one thing that wasn't uh, touched on at the very beginning... Uh, we may have we saw that Fumo had a whole bunch of his save files already with end game play, and the reason for that is that there's an actual glitch in the game that's just unavoidable, and it has to do with the armor. So if, if all of your save files have end game Phoebe, when you start a new one, all of your partners will have that armor, and that becomes extremely useful for in cases of like this fight. Squid has an ability that actually does a drain effect. However, Endgame Phoebe is actually resistant to drain. So instead of her losing MP or HP, she will gain it. Yeah, and later on that's relevant also with the oozes that will try to use drain attack. Uh, if Fumo is lucky enough, the oozes will use a lot of drain attacks on Phoebe and actually shorten some of his fights later in the game. Uh, also, wonderful crits there from Phoebe. She is more likely to crit than miss, and uh, getting lots of critical hits here and making quick work of the, the squid. That was a phenomenal fight. Yeah. And mainly all the hits going on to our, our main character, leaving Phoebe just to go, go ham. Yeah, but we are uh, going to be walking out of another dungeon. Uh, this time we at least get to keep uh, keep somebody with us, but this is another great time to get in any uh, donations or comments that we might have or uh, anything about the wonderful foundation we're doing this for. Alrighty, we do have a $15 donation from Zero Wing 2 saying, well, we'll be asleep when Trails in the Sky will be happening. We should really get the chest uh, quotes unlocked. They're super fun to read and just make the game more fun, unlike those silent Erebonian chests. I also have $5 from Neko saying, Sorry, I can't donate much, but I really appreciate what this is all about. As an adult who was diagnosed with depression and anxiety well into her adult years, and who is now trying to get a diagnosis for potential autism, Mystic Quest is my second RPG ever and the first I ever beat, so it has a special place in my heart. Again, thank you all so much for all these generous donations. Uh, they all go towards a fantastic cause in NAMI, which is National Alliance on Mental Illness. Uh, and again, once again, I do. I would really like to see that uh, fight Jin instead of being met. We're still sitting at 175 out of the $500 for it. So let's get those donations in. Back to y'all. Yeah, so the other we got from the Rune Cave there was our Libra Crest, and that was to allow us to teleport to this particular wake water area. Uh, Fuse on the end of the impression that, hey, we need wake water to unfreeze all of the town in the area, so let's go get it. And uh, we're going to go to town. But before we do that, we're going to do this battle tile here, and this is to get another item. This is where we get our magic ring. It adds extra magic stats and uh, gives us a little extra defense. Uh, there's three different encounters in here. We've got the elf and the two scorpions. We've got the two scorpions and toad, and then just two scorpions. Any time that we can leave our partner on auto is better. Trying to move around the spells uh, throughout these just eats away at your time. Yeah, no, another thing I want to mention is, uh, Go ahead, is the battlefields have a little set of different rules. Uh, those two scorpion fight, as you uh, saw just there, uh, it doesn't behave the same as uh, how it did in the Winter Cave. Because this formation in the battlefield only can ambush. And uh, we did it before Winter Cave, uh, the ambushes would be more likely to happen. So this is why I chose to do uh, this battlefield after which you gave.
Yeah, doing it after makes it a lot easier. Also, the formations that have been coming up so far on this are pretty awkward. There's been a lot of toggling back and forth between Fire and Thunder, uh, which has not really allowed Fumo to stay on auto for most of this. Uh, kind of hitting a rhythm now, but it's been a pretty rough battle tile, all things considered. Yeah, as we just see the power of that lightning just coming out and being very, very useful. Yeah, and the best part about the lightning spell is just how fast it is. Uh, it's got something like a 0.75 second uh, cast time, as opposed to some spells later in the, the run, which will have upwards of three and a half seconds. So it's a huge time save anytime you can use that lightning spell versus something else. Uh, we're here to save frames and seconds, and that's exactly what Fumo is going to do throughout this run. Yeah, so we just used the wake water there, and it did not actually break any of the ice spells. So now we got to go try and save the crystal. And this area here, <laughs> it's a puzzle. You have to move around these uh, platforms in just the right locations to be able to jump around. Um, and sometimes you have to remove them. It, I didn't know for the longest time, and there's a particular way to place them where you can skip a few fights. Uh, Puma's going to showcase that here once we... Uh, are able to move that third and final tile. So this is the only time that you can be in here. Once you complete the Ice Pyramid, which is the uh, next dungeon with the boss, uh, you can't come back here. So if you miss to grab that chest there at the end, uh, you, you, you can't get it anymore. Yep, and that chest contains the heal's uh, white magic. So, it heal in this game uh, cures status effects that have been inflicted upon you. And offensively, it inflicts status ailments on enemies. Yeah, so a lot of the spells in here kind of have a dual purpose. Like, life will heal you up or full heal you, but it can do fatal against your enemy. You have heal if you use it on enemy it can silence paralyze them it can do a wide variety of different actual status elements to the enemy and in some cases it is quite useful to actually try to uh, paralyze a boss or a mini boss yeah there'll be a, a boss later down the road specifically where uh, some very notable world records uh, have like six turn paralysis which is incredibly rare uh, but that's kind of what you're aiming for if you can pull it off with the heal spell. It's very much so a swag strat because it's incredibly risky to go for. Uh, you open your party up to near disaster, but if it works, uh, boy howdy does it work. It's phenomenal to pull it off. Yeah, getting first strike here against So crab. one interesting thing Great happened. Luck. Yes. Yes, that's exactly uh, why uh, we do the... the uh, Magic Ring Battlefield, so we can get to level 9 for that chance to happen. Yeah, so, so getting the first strike, we're able to take out all the enemies besides the, the Snow Crab here, reducing the amount of damage and, and monsters on the field that we take. Um, <laughs> BB just taking all those crits. And see here, we're actually gonna heal up our Phoebe and she's gonna resist the, the confusion. <laughs> it was a little close, yeah, but Phoebe. I managed to get it down. Yeah, I mean, it was a little close, but hey, we got through it and now we get a bit of a bomb upgrade here so they do a bit more damage. And we're on our way into Ice Pyramid. Another thing to know with this particular game is you saw Keely at the beginning, you know, chopping down the tree. Uh, in this game, there's a lot of actual in-world interaction. So right there, we just used our sword to flip a switch in the wall to open up the door. Uh, there are times where we end up jumping around with the bombs. We blow up uh, certain cave-ins. Uh, Going over to this chest, you'll only ever see this in the 100% run. This gives us the magic mirror. Uh, as you see, 
we're getting into combat, but we don't see the enemies like we normally do. And that's because they're hidden. Once we get the magic mirror, we're able to see all the enemies in this area. Yeah, and seeing the enemies in the area obviously is not important uh, because we know exactly where they are. But for the 100% run, you have to get every item uh, in its natural location, even if you've glitched it into your inventory. So the magic mirror is something you could easily glitch in or skip if you were doing uh, excuse me, any percent or just playing casually. Uh, but now we can see the enemies on the map instead of just having to guess or know where they are. So a nice little, uh, nice little item to pick up just from a visibility standpoint. Yeah. So even even like I said, like honestly, even though we can, you know, we can basically glitch in every single item into our inventory. But in, in the spirit of a hundred percent run. It really doesn't seem the right thing to do, so we do require you to go to each vanilla location for the item and grab it. We do make an exception to write in one of the key items. Uh, that's just to do a sequence break, just like in any percents. Yeah, we, we end up going back there and getting it anyways. But we'll get. We'll. we'll, we'll... It's a <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. I say we'll, we'll get to that and why, because uh, uh, the sequence breaking makes the later half of the game a lot faster. The, uh, as mentioned before, in these encounters, we always want to see the same monster. Just leave our partner on auto. Unfortunately, I got the Lamia in both the mage encounters, so I have to use Thunder in order to take care of them. Yeah, because those Lamias can be quite nasty as they'll put you put somebody to sleep, do a little bit of damage. Mainly it's the sleep that can be really hurtful. But it's okay because we got the, the lucky seven fight uh, with a single squid there, so the run is now blessed. Come to my, my, the enemy I always hate the most, the birds. Ah, uh, yes, the quintessential RPG element, the jerk birds. Mm -hmm. All birds are jerk in this game. There's two bosses that are birds that are jerks. These birds are jerks. Yeah. These birds are jerks because they can inflict the petrify status. Ah, right. Oh. Yeah, the mage there decided to, no, to take up. Uh, wizard spell charges. Yeah, these uh, these beholders or these eyeballs are both weak to thunder and weak to bombs. So either way, we can get through them in one turn. Just depends on who we decide to do it with. A little bit of a missed menu there. I wanted to use the seed in battle to restore Phoebe's spell charges, but uh, we got damaged instead. So we're going to use the AI to cure us up. Take a note that we were less than half health. We know what our AI partner is going to do. Yeah, I normally would use uh, PB2J's uh, white spell charges, but unfortunately uh, he ran out. So I'm going to use Phoebe's uh, white spell charges because she has more than enough. Yeah, and, and right now our, our seed count is quite uh, minimal and to take the time to dupe some extra ones, we, we don't want to spend any more time duping. We've, we've got enough but we'll have plenty later on. Yeah. You gotta love those mages deciding to heal themselves. Yup, uh, we deal with that while passing fire 
uh, multi-target fire. Yeah, because the mages are weak to fire, so they will easily die in one they, hit from yeah. the fire. That will soon be one stylistic up play I like last... to do. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so one stylistic play I personally like to do is to use seeds in the middle of battles uh, to restore spell charges. So any opportunity that I can, that I know Benjamin can finish, uh, I can pretty much go ahead and. Use that extra turn to our advantage. Yeah, because going into the menu after battle, it, it does take quite a bit of time to load up the menu, get into the items and and use it. And so anytime that you're not, you can minimize going into the menu is always better. Here we're getting to the more uh, tricky parts of the uh, ice Pyramid, because we're going to be running into the Sphinxes, which can inflict confusion just like the Centaurs did earlier in the Witcher Cave. Yeah, we're going to end up picking up our last actual consumable item. We, we picked up Cure Potions as we left the Bone Dungeon. We picked up Refreshers, which even in a casual playthrough you never really use. Um, and then here we're going to pick up our, our Heal Potions. We pick up the consumable, consumables in pretty much any order that you really want to. It's you want to pick up the seeds in your first slot, and then after that, it's whatever variation of the, the refreshers, heal, or cure pots that you want to do. Um, and the reason we do the seeds is one, it's in the first slot, and two, it actually goes on later for the inventory manipulation that will end up being happening after this dungeon. And a very important uh, item going to be picked up here, uh, the Noble Armor, which is about to be acquired, uh, which is going to give some like water slash ice resistance. Basically, without this item, the Ice Golem proper at the levels that we are at would be pretty much a, an, an untenable uh, situation. The main character would basically get one shot by every ability. So even in any percent, uh, that is an item that is picked up. Okay, we resisted the petrify there. <laughs> yep, lucky to avoid that. So here we're using our last seed, and we're going to use uh, all the thunder spell charges we get from that. Yep, we, we don't want to use any fire charges, because uh, we want to use those for the actual boss, because, well, he's a big old ice golem, so he's weak to fire. Yay for weaknesses. And we're about to get our sword upgrade of the Knight's Sword. Ooh. Always, always hurts when you get the uh, the Lamia and the Water Hag here. Just because there's one thing I need to watch out for. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So, yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, there's one thing I need to watch out for is there's a possibility that Benjamin can go first at level 11, um, independent of which weapon he has equipped, because the Knight Sword also gives a speed bonus. Um, but yeah, these fights are dependent on Benjamin going second and Phoebe going first. Yeah, kind of yeah, a... because you want 
the the behind the, the scenes. Not to be split. Yeah, kind of the behind the scenes stuff on that is uh, if you look at the actual character strings, which are give or take 80 characters long within the code, uh, there's actually like two character combinations that determine all the different stats and you know kind of what the actionable execution is going to be for each character. So it's very interesting to take a look at, you know, like how often Benjamin will actually go first versus Phoebe. It's a very low chance of it happening, but it can occur. And typically it actually messes up your fights. Uh, but here we go with the Ice Golem. Yeah, and we want, we, we, uh, but, uh, but, uh, Phoebe to J there. Yeah, and that's fine. That That's what we're considered to be like an empty turn. We're not taking extra damage. We prefer it to try to be put on Phoebe because you know, she can't be put to sleep. And there we go, a partner prioritizing healing us. That's another thing that this particular game does is we notice here with, you know, this playing us in now, Ice Golem. We can kind of tell how much HP the boss actually has left as there is a way to tell because you can see he's now melting. As Flame has, you know, crumbled. Every every monster has that uh, effect of not knowing, since there is no actual HP for the boss, we just see their actual sprite just change. Which I always thought was kind of cool. So I'm going to ask for an update for the HP display and the menu color just because uh, this is the ice golem and we're going to look at changing the menu color and HP display after each crystal is restored. As of right now, the menu color and the HP display are both the same, still red leading and the figure HP are still in the lead. Sounds good. Because scale is a pretty interesting HP display. Like, we have the small bars and the big bars, which represent 40 HP each, uh, which is a little bit of the oddity to see 40 HP being used as the big one instead of 100 HP, unlike Super Metroid, which has like, energy uh, displayed in blocks of 100, which makes sense, but blocks of 40 doesn't get as much sense. Well, I mean, each level you get, you get 40 health, so... It just marks another tally on for life. Yeah, this is also a good time for uh, any donations or comments or anything we need to discuss, uh, as this is another walk back out of a dungeon because we don't have the exit spell yet. Spoiler, soon. Alrighty, we do have an anonymous $25 donation. We have a $100 donation from Stabbage. Again, thank you guys all so much for these generous donations. The donation from Stabbage is, hoping to see that glitch, glitch exhibition for Trails in the Sky. If I fall asleep, I'll just have to watch the amazing VODs. Good luck to all the runners. Well, hopefully you won't be watching those VODs until after the event, but just in case there's a run you missed out, don't forget we do have the RPG Limburg YouTube channel, and uh, we are working on getting those runs up as soon as we can. And last but not least, we do have a $10 donation from Calm Lamity saying, I finally sit down on my computer after a long day, turn on the Mystic Quest run, and the very first thing I see is a Flamerous wipe. Sounds about right to see that Flamerous is just as rude as ever. After two long years, I'm so happy to see the run finally happen. I hope you all have a great time. Let's see that Jin fight. A special shout out to Possum on the couch. Hey, buddy. <laughs> yeah, Comlamity was the one who actually got me into looking into this game uh, after not really being a, a video game runner at all, so... Uh, yeah, back at you, buddy. Good to good to hear from you, and thank you for supporting Fumo and uh, RPG Limit Break and Nami. Yes, great to hear you, Cal Calamity. So originally, this was supposed to be a race between myself and Calamity for RPG Limit Break 2020. Uh, just so you guys know, this is a deferred run from that year, and I'm very grateful to have the opportunity to just showcase 100% in this year's RPG Limit Break. Yeah, so we come into another battle tile here. As we see, we get in the, the squid, and we have a squid and the sphinx. We we only want we only want the squid. 
We don't want the Sphinx. Sphinx are bad. So we've only seen one so far. A lot of a lot of runners, uh, I, I wonder if you do the same thing, Puma. It's like, count how many times you have to run from this particular battle tile. So far, I've only had to run once. Hmm, a little low on my EXP. Surprised it take, took so long to get to level 12. But yeah, uh, we want the single squids, which unfortunately can attack first and also get an extra attack in, as you saw there. So it's a little bit of an annoyance there. So the reason why I switched to sword uh, is to get a little bit of a speed bonus. And, and I believe that does help a little bit with the behavior of the battlefields. Uh, luckily, I didn't get any sphinxes, so... Our reward for clearing this battlefield is the exit spell, which drastically reduces our backtracking time. Uh, so now we go back to Aquaria and talk to our guy Spencer, who is under this house here in this uh, channel way, which was blocked off because it was iced over. But now that Aquaria is free from ice, we can go talk to him. Yeah, so we'll end up going to different towns and throughout the run we'll go back to certain locations and this one seems to be a, a pretty big town we end up coming back to a few different times uh, to talk to, to Spencer who is currently working on digging towards Captain Mac's ship who is a good, who is Kaylee's father actually, so there's a lot of inter-character uh, know around here between everybody uh, trying to save the world. And Benjamin was just kind of thrown into it saying, hey, you're going to be the hero. Yeah, poor Benjamin. Uh, basically, his village at the start of the game was uh, was blown up. And all remains or remnants of his family are gone. His friends are gone. His whole village is gone. Uh, so he's got to go make friends throughout the world who have families and have friends and, you know, kind of figure out how he can be part of their lives. Uh, kind of a sad story looking back uh, to the beginning of the game. Yeah, so now we're going to get here another another piece of equipment that even in the any percent run is picked up. It's the Venus Shield. Mm. That that mm. you ne you never go without your Venus Shield. So the Venus Shield provides paralysis protection, which is pretty pretty good for a few fights, uh, such as Ghidra, who often have a tendency to open with Paragas. Yeah, and then there again, we saw the the old man we never talked to, and he just says something about this statue seems really strange. Um, so we move it into a particular location, and it stays there, so we can end up hopping over to get into the next town, which aptly named Fireberg, which has some, at least in my opinion, some of the best music. Agreed. Yep, it has a unique town theme as well. It's very rock oriented. And so, as Spencer kind of mentioned, the, this uh, this area has been experiencing a lot of earthquakes. So, as you'll notice, as we're moving through the overworld here, every single time we stop, there's a bit of a quake. Here, we're going to pick up our friend here. His name is Ruben. He has a flail and only the life spell. Yeah, we got to go try and... We gotta, he tells us, hey, we got to go save my dad who's we need to stuck us. behind a rock. So we need, to get some we need to get some grenade bombs from this guy in the middle of town. Okay, well, let's go there. Oh, no. The door's locked. How are we going to get past it? Yeah, I wonder what the hotel here holds. Oh, I'm hey, sure look, it's our good friend Tristan. Our best friend and most valuable party member ever in Mystic Quest history. Hey, hey I've awesome. We've been running this game for a while. Are you a bit hungry right now? 
Yeah, this is a great time for donations, uh, comments, anything like that, because uh, there's going to be roughly 255 consumed seeds here, and we can kind of explain that after. Uh, but yeah, this is a real good time for donations and such. Sounds fantastic. I do have an update on the uh, scale versus figure HP display. So whenever you get a chance, uh, we should be swapping that over to scale. Uh, it is now at $31 to figures $30. On Actually, a related note, we have a five. Yeah, yeah, sounds great. Uh, on a related note, we have a five dollar donation from the one, the only High Spirits. You know what doesn't make sense? Numbers. Bring on the scales. <laughs> uh, we do also have That's a five dollar donation from Jimbo so Dan. Uh, Mystic Quest might not get as much love as the other Final Fantasy games, but the soundtrack is full of bangers. Absolutely agreed. What an incredible soundtrack on this game. And then, uh, once again, we right, still really are trying one. to get that Jin fight unlocked. Uh, that's still at $185 out of the $500. Uh, we've got probably about an hour, I believe, until that's going to come around. Yeah. So let's try to get those donations in. Let's really get that push going, guys. Come on, I believe we can get this done. So I guess so we can explain in the, what just happened because there was a lot to, uh, to take in. Yeah, so we bought for the vendor exactly uh, zero seeds. And uh, this is a well-coded 1992 game. Uh, so when you try to eat a zero seed, it actually underflows and goes back to the top of the string, 255. But with doing that, it also changes the item next to it. In this case, it changed it first to the wind coin. So we do it again to actually change it to the sun coin. The sun coin is what we actually get at the end of this particular dungeon, the uh, volcano. But if we decide to try to dupe it here in battle, we'll place it in its normal location in our inventory, and we can sequence break the game to go into the next zone without even going into Volcano. But we'll be back later. And this is going to be another required battle tile. Here we get yep, uh, the Gemini craft. It's a bit of a detour that we're taking right now. Yeah, but a bit, bit of a detour. Uh, we get the Gemini crest here, and this is so we uh, one for our 100% completion and second uh, There's a few items we have to pick up and we need to pick them up because we buy them from people uh, But if we have the later version of that item They won't sell us the item. So we're gonna get the battle axe and the steel helm But if we have the giant's axe and any future helms They'll look at us and go well, you already have a better item. I, I don't want to sell you this junk And we're gonna go buy the battle axe because the lady that's in this house sells it. And there's another lady in Aquaria that sells the steel helm. I, I like to think they're related because they both sell you stuff. Yeah, and they, and they have a teleport tile between their homes. Uh, you know, wouldn't that be great uh, to just have a tile that you can just step on and go to your relative's house instead of having to make the long drive or a long walk? Get back here. A little <laughs> when, bit of when they trolling. walk away from you. <laughs> yeah. <it's> just... <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I swung my axe around in your house. I swear. Hey, I look just what your sister had. <laughs> but now that we have the sun coin here, we can actually open up the door. And uh, you'll notice that there's some some weird things going on here. Because uh, we're not going to be able to uh, see anything going on in the overworld because there's a big uh, cloudiness. It's because we haven't done Volcano, so the game does not expect us to be here right now without having done Volcano. Yeah, but we do get the hardest fight in the game. 
Ooh, uh, very nice. Benjamin versus the, the one-off zombie. I had the best possible luck that uh, Benjamin went first, or PP2J went first. Yeah, that's extremely good luck. He can go anywhere from letting you go first to punching you, putting you to sleep, or petrifying you. Sometimes poison no, too, or getting critical hit by his two attacks. And here we have our best friend again, you know, good old Tristam, back in action. Here we are getting to chop down some trees with our freshly bought battle axe. Ooh, there was a little bit of bad luck in the beginning, but I got good luck in the end. Uh, Tristam normally needs free shots in order to defeat a mummy, but with a critical hit, that can be reduced to one shot, as you saw there. Yeah. With the uh, the spirits here, the ghosty goos, they're floating, so Tristan will have no problem one-shotting them. Uh, but if they actually use their uh, stat drain ability, he won't be able to. And that's where the refreshers actually come into play. You can only use them in battle, and they refresh any stats that you lost. Uh, even casually, I never really used them. I don't want to mention that the specters here actually can duplicate themselves, which prolongs the fights a little bit longer because we can just one-shot them. A few enemies in this game are able to make copies of themselves. Yeah, the specters, I believe the mummies can, and so can the ninjas. Yeah, the ninjas are by far the scariest of the three. If they get a hold of you, uh, <laughs> bad things can happen with uh, with their dart moves and, and whatnot. So best to avoid that at all costs with the ninjas. Yeah, so we try to talk to, to the grandfather tree here and he won't talk to us. Oh, hey, you know what? I bet I know who we can actually get to talk to the tree. Kaylee from Forestdale. Uh, but she's probably in Aquaria right now, so let, let, let's go back there. And so we get to make the long walk back to Aquaria. And we get to go spend time more with Spencer. Yep, one more long walk over. Yeah, but definitely yeah, worth of it. <laughs> Kaylee, uh, Kaylee 2 is far, far superior to Tristam. Yeah, thankfully, mm -hmm. we don't have Tristam 2 for very long. He's not much different from his first iteration. Like, he doesn't get any new spells. It's only higher level. Yeah, only more HP. Most everybody, everybody else, either they come back with more HP and extra spells. Then we get to what I consider to be one of the funniest parts of this particular game. Um, we, have, we, as you can see, we have a certain movement speed we, we run throughout this entire game. Uh, however, Phoebe decides to change things up a bit. Oh yeah, the dragon claw that was that Tristan got from the bone dungeon. And he decided to give it to us. Get your shrugs out. <laughs> yeah. How is it? Phoebe runs so fast out of here, this cave's collapsing, and we just casually walk out. Yep. And one of two shrugs. <laughs> He's like, I gotta go tell my I gotta go tell my grandfather Spencer that the caves collapsed. Bye. Yeah, meanwhile, again, leaving you in the collapsing cave to fend for yourself. Recurring theme in this game of uh PB to J being left in a cave to try to figure out what to do and where to go. Yeah. 
So you know, Kaylee has way more health than what she did when, we, when she first joined in, and also has a better axe. Also, you know, it's like we, we have bombs. We want as little bombs as possible uh, that'll come into play later on. That brown chest there is always going to be a stack of 10 bombs, even if we have a, a ranged party member, either Tristam or PB in our team. Um, it'll always be bombs to refill for free. Yeah, and a brief point of uh, point of emphasis there. We exited uh, out of the, the focus tower, uh, intentionally walking down that path and then walked back in. This is so that after using the exit spell here, uh, Fuma will basically be able to exit out to the correct side of the focus tower, picking up arrow here, which is arguably, maybe outside of exit, the most important spell to pick up in the run. Yeah, arrow being so useful in this in these spots upcoming, and being able to exit out and not have to rewalk that long travel down there to get it. Well, when it comes to these encounters, we hope for only two. If there's two monsters out there, uh, Kaylee can easily one-shot them with Arrow. However, if we leave her on auto, she'll use the Cure spell, which damages the undead, but doesn't take them out in one turn. So unlike... Um... But for most Final Fantasy games, like, life has the opposite effect of what you want it to do. So it doesn't actually, like, one-shot uh, undead enemies. Instead, they're immune to that. Yeah, so you're making a quick detour here. This is where we're going to get our axe upgrade to the giant's axe. Yep, we didn't do that with Tristan because uh, the encounters are already tricky as they are, and Kaylee simplifies them, uh, like, so easily. With just a cast of arrow. Yeah, so now we got our, our giant axe. We're now ready to talk to the tree. Oh man, all these encounters with threes. See, there comes that end game armor there on the Kaylee, only taking the one damage. And so, pretty much, this tree is plagued with monsters, and he says, Please free me of these monsters, and I will bring you to the next location as a reward. Yeah, the tree is basically the longest section of the game uh, in most run-throughs, kind of, I guess, tied with the volcano. Uh, but those are kind of the two areas that you spend a lot of time in, a lot of levels and XP to be gained, uh, and a lot of fights that you really need to know what to do in each individual encounter. Uh, there's encounters with worms where there's two and three of them, and also some where there's two worms and an ooze. There's encounters with uh, scorpions, encounters with skeletons, uh, a lot of knowledge that you have to have and have to remember to to get through the tree quickly. It's not super difficult because Kaylee is very overpowered, um, as you know she's at level 31 to PB today, PB2J's level 13. So she easily clears this, but you have to be cognizant of what encounters you're running into to get through quickly, and Fumo does a great job of that. A little oddity of its trees, uh, their level is like one or something, just like the beginning of the game's trees, so you always get a first strike against them. And for those of you noticing the, the little intricacies of the game, as we throw our axe, we now see it's actually a gold axe instead of a silver axe that we're throwing at the enemy. 
It's just one of those little intricacies of this game then how you can see little different things happen with your weapons that upgrade. Same thing happens with the claws as uh, it's, I believe it's yellow scratch marks for the cat claw, blue for the charm claw, which we're going to get way later in the run, and then red for this dragon claw. The one nice thing about the claws, and, and we may end up getting to see it later in this uh, run here shortly, the Dragon Claw ends up having a lot of uh, status ailments associated with it. it. It pretty much inflicts, I think, almost every ailment if it can, like Petrify, Silence, Paralyze, uh, yeah. Poison. No fatal status, though. No, but Stone does just does just as well. Oh. Right? Yeah, the Petrify is what happens when uh, they, it procs on an enemy. It just shows the enemy die like instantly because there's no way they can cure uh, Petrify. Mm. So here we get here for double orbs. orbs. You always like to see two worms because you can always use a single arrow cast to take care of them. Yeah, and now we're kind of getting to the more technical side of the enemy encounters as we saw the users before in Fireberg area and we saw the eyeballs, which will come again here in the future. Uh, they, you can no longer cast magic on them. They reflect the magic back at you. So you have to be very uh, cognizant of that uh, to make sure you don't reflect your arrow or any other spells back at you because you can get quite dangerous. Yeah, yep, this... and our two little Jerkford friends uh, also have that going for them as well. Yeah, and it can be dangerous to leave uh, leave Kali on auto in this uh, this entire tree when you're running against those oozes, uh, because she will basically bounce spells off of them back at you, uh, likely killing PB to J. Uh, usually not killing herself, but it is very dangerous if you reflect spells back, whether the oozes are with the worms or with the skeletons later on. Uh, it can be very scary to to leave her on auto. Yep, and there's one of those oozes as we were talking about. Yeah, as we saw, just one simple hit from them took us past half health. But we're getting so the very oozes are weak to bombs. You can also use the Dragon Claw on them because they're not immune to Petrify. Although it is a, uh, it's not guaranteed to hit. Yeah, all the elements are not uh, guaranteed to hit, and when they when they hit, it feels really good. So here's one example where uh, Kaylee's AI can be a little bit awkward at times. Because uh, I found that she cast arrow uh, on all the targets instead of uh, using her axe. When the axe can one-shot the enemies, including the giant toads. Yeah, so right now we're about 60% of the way through the tree. As we can see, this is... I think I might have also mentioned this is one of the longer areas to get through. Yeah, lots of different encounters though, um, but no real, real tricky fights so far, thankfully. Uh, the toads have kind of cooperated only using poison and regular hits. 
Um, but the, the toads can cause, uh, you know, game overs where you have to kind of reset and reattempt the fight. Uh, the, the skeletons later on can, can do the same, but so far we've been pretty lucky on the, the encounter so far, so that's great. Yep. So the toads can inflict paralysis and petrify, and the skeletons have an instant death attack called Doom Gaze, which has a low accuracy chance, but when it hits, it doesn't feel great. Yeah, so right there we see this another instance where the AI play. is not reliable. Yeah, as we saw right there, both worms tried to drain HP from Kaylee, and she said, "Nope, I'm gonna take HP from you." So I and there's the petrified. Don't rock. use Aqua on the first fights. Yeah. On future ooze fights, I will use auto because Kaylee's AI will have known that uh, you can use physical attacks. But for some reason, when you see enemies on the overworld for the first time, even though we've seen oozes before, uh, it's the first time you see an ooze on the battlefield, AI will act a little different and uh, learn stuff often the hard way by getting reflected. Which is why I avoid doing that by manually attacking with uh, Kaylee there. Yeah, it's very interesting that that kind of AI learning, if you will, and obviously this is not AI learning in the sense of, uh, you know, like earlier in this marathon we had the, the Final Fantasy X, uh, you know, TAS or AI TAS run. This is not machine learning to that level, but it's really neat that there was some form of AI learning in a game from, you know, the early 90s uh, where it picked up what was happening and could kind of respond to it. Uh, in a way that was favorable for you. And there we see that train coming in to great effect to get through the fight faster. This is one of those fights nice. that can get quite dangerous if you have Kaylee on auto because she will try to cast arrow on everything and reflect back at you. But those slimes seem to be cooperating pretty well with you there, Fumo. Yeah, she subsequently learns. Yep, yeah. It only happened in the first encounter, but other than that, like, she behaves uh, properly. Uh, like, the same thing happens with the Beholders. Uh, when you first fight them, uh, she will want to use uh, uh, spells, but uh, later fights, um, she won't do that. So there's, so there's one other item, for those of you that have played this game, there's one other item in this uh, this dungeon. It's a spell. We get it after we complete this area. Uh, therefore, once we beat the final mini-boss of this area, all the encounters disappear. So we're able to go free reign and not have to worry about any more encounters on our way to that uh, last item. Home stretch of the tree. Yeah, as we come around this uh, this bend here, we're going to be going up a flight of um, stairs with the claws, and then we got about three more fights before we get to Gidra, who is a Camaro. Yep. Yeah, and I suppose before yeah, we do get like to... 
to Gidra. Uh, this would be a good time to find out if there are any updates on uh, the scale, the menu color, or any other uh, major donations that have come in, or any comments to read. Uh, as of right now, the scale of figure HP is still locked in that close battle. It is 31 for scale and 30 for figure. So if you're tired of these uh, scales and can't tell how much HP someone has and really want to see it, go ahead and get those donations in. It's only going to be $2 to swap that. Uh, we do also have the menu color. Uh, again, right now we're sitting on red at 35, but blue and green both have 30. Uh, so for a $6 donation, you can uh, make... Fumo changed the menu color. And then, uh, of course, we do still have the gin incentive. Uh, running a little lower on time to get that one going, so that 185 out of 500. Um, I did mention it earlier as well that uh, Mystic Quest is a sort of a new prize block. We have some really cool uh, Trails in the Sky prizes. So we have the uh, Legend of Heroes enable pins by Pinbox LTD. We have a Trails Commissioned Art Poster by the Trails in the Sky Runners, and we do have the uh, Trails in the Sky Trilogy Game Keys by Shovel. Uh, so again, uh, get those donations in, rpglevelbreak.com slash donate, and uh, keep uh, being awesome with this Mystic Quest uh, comfy run. Keytra can inflict a plethora of status ailments, and Confusion is one of them, Petrify is another, and Paralysis, which is what we want to see, because uh, both Kaylee and pv Duj are immune to Paralysis. Yeah, another thing to note is that if if, if our turn, if, if pv Duj dies before his turn actually comes to play, if you had a spell or action queued up, uh, if you get lifed up, it'll end up using that spell. As we just saw, it was, we queued up the arrow spell, we died before our turn, Kaylee ended up lifing us up when he immediately used the spell. Yeah, we saw a nice use of the Venus shield there, oh, that resisting be that pr uh, paralysis. goes Gidra down and we just saw a couple skeletons just disappear there and goon kid now the giant tree is going to travel us goon kid <laughs> all right Even go on kid supposed to say go on kid Now that we've cleared all the enemies here, we can go grab the Meteor spell without fighting any encounters, which is in that red chest over there. Yeah, so being able not to have to go through any more encounters, it, it's... I don't even remember how many encounters it is just to get here in a casual playthrough. Uh, but in speedrun, we want to go fast. We don't want to have to fight any more than we have to. And, and Meteor's going to be used quite a bit until we get our next big uh, wizard spell. Uh, we we'll, won't come until the, the Tower of Azuzu. So now we make it into our next town here, which is aptly named Windia. Uh, we're gonna be picking up, gonna talk to our final person that we actually have to talk to, to buy an item. We're gonna get the Cupid's locket. And then we're gonna end up talking to Otto, who manages the machine of the Rainbow Bridge, which allows us to get to Bazooza's Tower. However, it's a bit too windy for that. So we gotta go to Mount Gale to stop the wind from blowing. We believe that the Wind Crystal is on Mount Gale, so we're going to go and try and save it. Apologies, 
some sort of buffering. By the way, I'm aware that this is showing off right now. Yeah, so as we go up here through this uh, Mount Gale, uh, this is where we use a lot of the Meteor. Um, meteor will take out two enemies. Uh, if we get a three enemy encounter, we have uh, Kaylee kill one enemy with the, either the arrow spell or the axe. And then uh, we'll have PB to J actually take out the rest. Or, you know, confusion can happen. Yeah, so basically as we're going through the mountain here, there's going to be a new set of enemies. Set the feet a bit. Uh, and they're primarily going to be not necessarily weak to Meteor, but it's going to be the most effective spell. Uh, so you're going to see a lot of Meteor spam coming out. Uh, if you're familiar with the any percent run, uh, this is no different. Meteor is still going to be very effective here. It's non-elemental in a sense, uh, as opposed to like fire, ice, lightning type elements. So uh, it basically it's effective against anything like a Chimera, uh, either currently or later. And just really effective to, to take out two stacks of enemies or, uh, or help out with like skeletons, which can be very scary otherwise on, uh, on Mount Gale here. Yeah, we see Fumo here using some different uh, strats to get through the two-style encounter. Trying to save on those uh, wizard casts, you know, trying to stay out of the menu to reuse seeds because we have very, very few wizard casts on PB to J. We only have a max of four. So the least amount of times we have to use a seed, the better. Another thing to note is we, as some of you may have noticed, anytime we fight a mini boss, uh, that mini boss ends up becoming a regular uh, encounter we have to fight. Like the Minotaur became an actual regular encounter boss. Uh, the, Chim the Chimera, which was Gidra, becomes a little mini boss. The Squid. And here we have uh, the one, the only, the Dullahand. Yeah, Dullahan's kind of scary. Uh, Dullahan will do the same type of uh, instant death attack the skeletons would do, except uh, Dullahan also has 89 magic power, which is incredibly high. Uh, so its Doom Dance will hit far, far more often. We see Fumo going for some swag strats here uh, with that heal spell, going to see if we can get a paralysis. If it happens, it's usually going to happen on the second turn here. Uh, but we do see Dullahan taking an action, so no swag today unless we go for a second attempt, which would be pretty risky. And there's the Doom Dance. The other thing to note is if, if it comes into play here, Dullahan will do an area swipe with this sword that he, like you just did if we have uh our partner defend us only one person will take damage and they'll only take the damage of one per, uh person split so if, it, if the attack does 200 to each of us and kaylee's defending us she'll still only take the 200 versus the 400. But definitely getting the sleeps here on Kaylee. Always great to see those empty turns. Well, we got poison on Dullahan. Uh, it's uh, objectively the most useless status to him, uh, you know, inflict on him. But uh, good job, Kaylee. You tried. It does add up over time, thankfully. Mm, oh, I mean, we'll a little bit counts, right? One attack. Yeah. There we go. We're not exiting out of here just yet because we have one item to grab and that is the Apollo Helm. 
which confers fire resistance, which will help in one of the encounters in uh, Pazuzu's tower. That's upcoming. Let's run away. Yeah, a lot of the armor that you get in that lo the location that you're in kind of gives resistance, and they do stack on each other. So, uh, in Volcano, there's a helm that's the uh, the Moon Helm, and it gives you fire resistance. Well, alternatively, here the Apollo Helm gives you fire resistance and wind resistance. So you kind of get the stacking resistances from each area. We have time for a quick donation after that Dullahan fight. Yeah, go right ahead. We have a $25 donation from Miria saying, I like numbers and blue. And you know what that means? It means that we're going to swap that menu color and the uh, scale and figure HP display uh, as we now have blue menus in the lead and we have the uh, digits in the lead for the uh, HP. So whenever you have a free moment, feel free to swap those over at your earliest convenience. Thank Probably you, Miriam. Excellent. I will area. do that after I talk to Otto. Yeah, so now that, that Mount Gale here, Dullahan said, Oh no, I don't have the Wind Crystal. That's Zuzu. So now we get to go talk to Otto, and he's going to light up the Rainbow Bridge. And he mentions that his daughter Norma is stuck in that tower, so we have to go save her. Here's Pazuzu's There's tower. Uh, so, the same <laughs> trick I did with the boozes, I'm doing with the, uh, the, the holders here because they have a reflective barrier. Yeah, the, the, the beholders here will always start off with a blind attack, which for your partner, it reduces their chance to hit. However, with PBDJ, uh, bombs always hit, so we're not too worried about him missing if he does get blinded. And you also notice what? me using exit and life more. <laughs> Even though they have a chance of missing, I, I like them because of the shorter animation times. So now we're into, you know, Bazuzu's tower here, and this tower plagues every runner, and I'm sure Yufumu have been plagued by Bazuzu's tower before. There are six floors that the good old jerkbird will end up on uh, Zuzu. Uh, in any percent, it is floor six you want him to land on, and I believe here in 100%, it's either... Uh, or five or six you want to land on. 100% you want floor one, actually. Hmm. Uh, floor one or floor six are usually pretty fast because uh, I, in this variation, I grab Excalibur first. Oh. Yeah, one thing to uh, just kind of bring notice to, I, I don't recall if we mentioned it yet or not, but uh, the exit spell as we use it, uh, that actually will remove the enemy from combat, but will not grant the XP for the enemy, whereas using the life spell will. So it's kind of an interesting thing to keep your levels in the range you want for the end game, especially with this not being a PB attempt, with this being a marathon run. There may be extra levels that are gained throughout, and so keeping those levels down could be very important. Uh, also a neat little thing with, uh, with Pazuzu there, when Fumo talked to Pazuzu, he disappeared to a different floor. The floor that he disappears to is actually determined by the frame you talk to Pazuzu on. Uh, and there is no RTA viable way yet that we know of to manipulate knowing what frame you're on uh, to talk to Pazuzu to guarantee you get the floor you want. So if anyone's feeling really frisky and uh, and wants to make that a personal project, uh, 
I'm sure the Mystic Quest community would really love for you to do that. Yeah, I know Voltress, who's uh, another runner of this, was actually doing some research, and he, and he did find out that it is based on a frame. So, he was like, do you want to spend the time trying to figure out if there's an RTA viable way to uh, <laughs> know what frame you're on? And that goes for everything in this in this game. Is like your crit hits, your enemy crit hits, all of those are based on your frames. There is no quote-unquote seed like there is in other Final Fantasies. So the walk up the tower is pretty interesting. Uh, because you're going up the odd floors and going down the even floors. It's kind of a pretty good design, uh, because you're constrained around the tower design. Yeah, we kind of noticed how the Unlike different uh, stairways like here. Oh. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah, and here we can see the different, you know, floors as we're going up. We're fighting the same encounter every single time. And uh, we're going to be making our way here to uh, some we'll call uh, the uh, the heck way, uh, as it becomes a very very dangerous encounters. Yeah, which interestingly enough, will be the second heck way at RPG Limit Break in the last twelve hours, as there's also a heck way in uh, in Willow, which was run earlier today. Indeed. So the reason why this is called the Heckway here is uh, the Matacors can deal a lot of damage, they can petrify, and they're often really hard to kill because uh, only Life and Exit can kill them in one shot. I know in the Japanese version, the strategy to fight them is a little bit uh, unorthodox. Uh, it involves uh, multi-target casting, uh, arrow spell, and then using uh, Kaylee's physical attacks, for what I believe. I, I need to be checked on that because uh, it's been a while since I've seen a Japanese uh, run of this game. Yeah, except I believe uh, in the Japanese run, the life spell does not actually do the same status of elements that it does in the US version. So this uh, excellent point that life does does not work in the Japanese version. Once we get through the heck, we have to deal with the next most terrible creature is the mages in this tower. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Oh, these mages can really mages. infuriate everybody. With the broken quake. Which I like to believe was supposed to be meteor, because that's also earth elemental. <laughs> Also, welcome to the Heckway, uh, Fumo 2, Heckway 1. Let's see if we can go 3-1 here. Uh, but yeah, double Petrify, have a great day. Uh, but yeah, those mages that are coming up, generally speaking, and we kind of touched on this earlier, that damage is usually not an issue outside of bosses. Uh, damage with the mages can be an issue if they both decide to spam Quake. Uh, PB to J can go down before even getting a turn. Sometimes there might even be three of them. Uh, it can cause some issues with Kaylee. It normally doesn't because she's just that robust, but something to keep an eye on in case the mages get real frisky. Yeah. So there the Chimera did did a quake and it was, you know, 150, almost 200 max damage. Uh, if, the, if the mages do it, it's about 300. <laughs> Yep, and if it's single target, uh, it deals even more damage. Uh, yeah, because damage happen is if, uh, split one of your party evenly. members is uh, incapacitated. Oh, but, but to also know, as as you see, we no longer have any heal potions in our inventory. And that's another thing that's amazing with the AI is that any any time that the AI used a, a heal a heal on us, 
they use the heal item first before using the spell if they have it. But, oh no, we're out of our wonderful bombs. Kind of sad. Yep, but I'm going to have to refill up at some point, aren't I? Well, yeah, you you'll see what happens. Yeah. And yeah, well, speaking of that, that grenade was so amazing. Speaking of that, uh, where do we stand on the the gin fight uh, donation? If we have an update on that, I believe we are still at 185 out of the 500 dollars. Got it. Thank you. Get your donations in, folks, if you want to see that. Uh, gin skip is something that happens even in any percent, but uh, we'd, we'd love to be able to see Fumo go back and, uh, and fight that gin. Ah, uh, yes, before we found the item underflow routes that we used today. So again, about how, how far off is that? Pending Zuzu, 25, 30 I want to say that's about... Less than half an hour away. Yeah. All right, y'all heard him. Half an hour to get those donations in for that. Yeah. So in this dungeon, we're going to get two items. We're going to get the flare spell, which is going to be very, very useful, and as as uh, Fumo had mentioned, the Excalibur, which is the final sword upgrade. The one deal in the Excalibur. Then we don't have the that, legendary very many sword items left to is looking for to this day. Ah. Uh, again, pretty pretty lucky with the encounters and not getting the uh, three encounter fights here with the. Uh, Horseman, or Thanatos, I should say. Yeah, not seeing the beholders in these fights is pretty helpful because I would have used the Dragon Claw uh, because we're rad of bombs in the hopes that we can inflict a petrify status on them. Yeah. So there's a bomb of a wall when we, we don't have any bombs, so we're just, we're just, just gonna skip that for right now. Plus, we still have to get the Excalibur, which is farther down, so... Alright, moment no. of truth on what floor uh, the Zuzu will be on. Uh, but first, we must get the yeah, Nagas with our newfound Spell Flare. Yeah, we, we can see where he is and we can kind of manipulate where he goes. Uh, there's these switches that we hit with our axe that... Uh, pretty much shut off the elevator going to that floor and above or below so we can manipulate where he goes. <laughs> yeah, and Fumo, I believe in, uh, in PB attempts, you would have flipped the switch first, correct? Because it would be a reset if it wasn't a, a marathon run? Mm, or is that not the case? 80% sure. Uh, but like with 100%, um, you can play it about more uh, once you go for Excalibur because uh, you'll be able to uh, tell which switches, switches you can flip and which ones you can uh, skip. Gotcha. Because if we restrict uh, Zuzu's access to a few floors, like if we don't hit the switches, then talk to Bazuzu in the certain floor. Uh, Bazuzu will run away to a random floor, uh, not including floor seven. Uh, but if we hit those switches, we can trap them, not uh, trap them in that specific floor. Which is the logic behind uh, uh, this tower. And I believe, I believe Otto mentions it, that you can manipulate the floors by hitting the switches and shutting off the elevator. Yep, he did make reference to that. Oh, 
Floor 4. There is a trick I want to do with Floor 4. Because I haven't hit the Floor 6 switch, I want to see if I can push Pazuzu to Floor 6. I've never had that actually happen to me before, but I'll see if I can try my luck. Yeah, so we're gonna hit the switch here, which is to the left, so it'll shut the shut the elevator down, so he won't go down anymore. But he can go either to floor six or to floor five. Since we did leave that floor six uh, switch untouched. Uh, he can go to either one. We prefer that he would go to floor first, six because we just shut the switch. Oh yes, definitely need to grab Excalibur first. Yeah, one thing to note is the order of the floors, uh, which is better. So for hundred percent, there's not much of a difference between floor six and one. Uh, compared to any percent. Uh, those two remain the fastest floors. Um, floor 4, 5, and 2 are definitely not great uh, in 100%, especially floor 5, because you're gonna have to uh, hit the floor, floor and 6 switch. Although, what remains to be seen is if I can force uh, Pazuzu to floor 6, because I hadn't, haven't hit the floor six switch yet. Yeah, so there we saw at least when we don't have any bombs, we decided to go good old uh, fisticuffs with the enemy and, and, and punch them. Yep. That's what happens, and a lot of magical things can happen uh, because we have zero bombs. Well, that's part one. Uh, you may have noticed that uh, we also uh, blew up some caves without actually throwing bombs. That's an effect of the zero bomb glitch. Yeah, so the game doesn't want you to be, be soft locked behind running out of bombs. So when you have their grenades, it's a throw animation to use the bomb. So only with the grenades are you able to get rid of the blocked doors uh, if you don't have any bombs. It'll just, oh, you don't have any bombs? Okay, door delete. And it does save on the on the animation oh, time of not back, actually back. having to um, throw the bomb. Okay. So I'm gonna hit the floor uh, floor switch. Uh, how we do that is with the axe. I don't know how it doesn't break the switch, but that's how it works. Wait, look, this, this switch is made of steel, okay? And we just punch a hole in the wall. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah, these gargoyles can inflict like, petrify, but... Uh, good thing that didn't happen twice. So let's see if this uh, push strat works in my favor. I mean, so let's interact with Pazuzu. And in find theory, out which it, it's a 50 50. It either is or it isn't, you know? Yep. Uh, you yeah. Have two either options. way, you have to flip the switch. Unfortunately, so. floor five. So we're going to have to talk to Pazuzu on 4-5, and yes, we're going to need to flip this switch uh, that we skipped bypassed earlier in 4-6. Yeah, so getting back to that 4-5, we got to go back down through the heck way that we came up, but luckily we don't have to fight any uh, any monsters until we get to the yep, couple that are actually out the way. Pazuzu. Thanks. Yeah, if you, if you actually leave this area by accident with the exit spell, uh, guess what? All the enemies respawn. Yeah, it's 
It's happened to all of us. Don't worry. Yeah. As yeah, you see, the, 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 uh, the, the defense risk here. Comes. I'll see if I can win. Yeah, the defender there coming in from Kaylee. When when Kaylee is defending Benjamin or uh, PB to J, she's actually being targeted by everything. So if they try to target him with uh, silence or a sleep, she takes the hit. Um, but if she's blinded, she won't. I found that out the hard way. <laughs> yeah, or if she's incapacitated in another way, like get KO'd or uh, petrified. Well, she can't tank it for you. In that case. Yeah. So now we're gonna go back up the stairs to go across the ledge and back down some more stairs. Yay. So the interesting thing about defend is that like you can also defend with Benjamin, but the defend actually takes uh, precedence over the actual turn order, which is a little interesting. Uh, but it does make a few fights uh, a little safer, like Pazuzu coming up. So Ben can tank a yeah, few Pazuzu. shots. Yeah, Pazuzu being a very, very dangerous fight with the amount of AoE attacks he has, the, the stone beak, and our current HP of 800 is, well, not a whole lot. Alrighty, we're almost there. I, I cannot remember the magic numbers we're looking for. I know about possible one of those magic numbers. Uh, with regards to what exactly? With uh, to Pazuzu, it's uh, like six flares and oh, two arrows or something it's, like that? It's nine flares, four arrows, and two axe hits for any percent. I don't know the hundo numbers offhand, um, but that's basically... It's the same strats. Oh, it's the, okay, it's the exact same thing. So we're looking for ideally nine flares from uh, PB to J, four arrows from Kaylee, and then two axe hits. Uh, if the fight goes perfectly. Uh, it almost never does, so... Uh, well, we can keep count. We'll see what happens. Uh, Pazuzu has the most HP of any boss uh, with 25,000, not ex not including uh, the final boss. Ooh, Kili getting petrified there kind of hurts a little bit. Uh, luckily, we had a full heal beforehand, so... That was a bit scary there. Yeah, it's especially spooky because any of those like wind attacks from Pazuzu, even though they're, you know, magic oriented, magic based, they can still crit. This was something that was, you know, brought up earlier by Tibol. Uh, that, you know, we're not safe from crits as a player, even though we can't crit the bosses. So they get to cheat, which is not really that nice for us. So as he's doing those animations, it's it's you got to keep track. Anytime he does that uh, closing of his wings, he's either raising or lowering his reflect shield. So you got to keep track of when and when not to cast flare or arrow. Because if his wings are up uh, and they get, it's reflected back at you, it's a it's a feels bad bad day. Very rarely can uh, uh, PB2J get reflected as on the same turn that uh, Pazuzu is taking off the shield. I have had to be like recently in practice, and I was very surprised because I thought uh, Ben was always slower, but not the case. That was a relatively fine fight. Yeah, not a yeah, single exactly. Doom really Dance, well which is awesome. <laughs> and only the one early Petrify. Yeah, only the one Stone Beak, which... Yeah. Very, very nice fight. We 
gotta remember to grab the sky coin here. And we can also get an update on the HP and menu color as well. Here we say goodbye so to Kaylee we've, too. Uh, yep, and and Trist or not Tristam. We have a friend show back up again. Hey, it's Ruben. Cause uh Otto goes, yeah, if I if you want to increase the rainbow bridge to the next area, I need extra power. And Ruben's like, hey, my dad knows something about a thunder arc. We'll see if we can talk to him to get one. Well, problem is, uh, uh, Dad go. is trapped. <laughs> yeah, Dad's still trapped. We didn't save him. But now we have yeah, time so let's to go do save that. And see how... Yeah, so we got about... 10 minutes before the gin skip has to be uh, completed here. Yep. Or the gin fight, I should say. Alrighty, you heard it. 10 minutes to get those donations in for that gin fight, everybody. It's one battle tile and a walk through an area with some fun interaction with uh, zero bombs here. And if there's any other donations along the way, this is a, a good time to read them. I do want to remind everybody we are raising money for uh, NAMI, which is the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Again, it's such a fantastic cause. Uh, you know, the last couple of years have been such a stressful time in the world, and understandably, it's put a lot of strain on people's mental health. Uh, in the United States alone, 21% of adults report suffering from some kind of mental illness. In the United States, that's 52.9 million people. Please remember to reach out for help if you need it. Uh, NAMI loves uh, the phrase, you are not alone, which is so true. There's so many people struggling with mental illness and so many people are willing to help you. Please, please make sure to reach out and get the help you need uh, if you are doing so. All right. So I'm going to do a little menu trick as well. Uh, I'm going to use the seeds in battle to restore Ruben's wizard spell charges because he only has seven. Yeah, and there's 10 fights here. Ruben is doing so well as he came back with, you know, an extra spell that's really nice to have and he's able to one shot all of these encounters. And this is the final battle tile we ever do, as this will give us our Thunder spell. And we'll see the magic of zero bombs in the mine. Yeah, so I... I wonder if they didn't think of anybody who would actually have zero bombs. Uh, we'll, we'll let the madness happen first. Then we'll kind of explain a little bit what happens. First, we need to clear a few enemies. All right, pay attention to what happens next. Oh, there we go. And we'll use this trick to bypass those two skeletons we saw earlier. And also use the fact that we can punch holes in the wall. Yeah, so now we have access there to escape. With the, yeah, with the, uh, <laughs> with the bombs being at zero, we actually end up uh, storing the elevator animation in the uh, 
the zero data for the bombs and we can just use it whenever in this location uh, so we can use it to bypass certain boundaries bypass certain plates it'd be really useful because we don't have to fight Jin. we can just skip them speaking of that where are we on the status of of that of the gym yes we are still at $185 out of 500 Okay. So we're rapidly approaching. Uh, so it doesn't seem like we may be able to fight him, unfortunately. But uh, well, Jin is right here. You see him just appear on the bottom right. Yeah, basically what's going to happen here is uh, it's using the elevator glitch, if you will, twice uh, in rapid succession in order to, uh, to bypass the fight. So it's a pretty nifty little sequence here uh, that Fuma's going to do. But the, the bomb storage, this is kind of the only useful place that it happens. And this is also why Fumo's been on zero bombs for, uh, well, quite a while. <laughs> Uh, about the, the last 45 minutes. Yep, we just bypassed Jin this way. So we don't exactly need to exit out of here right away. Yeah, and then you actually can, if you use the elevator at the wrong time, you can get stuck in the wall there and have to exit and retry it again. I tried to interact with Jin there, but, uh, well, the pulley, uh, was still active. So, um, well, unfortunately, uh, we did not meet that incentive, so we'll have to exit out. But that's okay, the, the Jin fight itself is not too particularly difficult. Um, we can definitely use White and Meteor to, uh, deal with, uh, Jin. Uh, Jin is resistant to fire, so we can't really use uh, Flare. Um, we freed Dad from the mine, and now we can talk to him in bed, and uh, we get the Thunder Rock for our troubles. Yeah, so now we get to go walk all the way back to Windia, but, but why don't we just do Volcano over here right now? We, we've got, you know, we got Ruben. He does have white, a very, very good spell. Well, we'll see what happens soon. Okay, now we make our way back to Windia, and we have a little bit of downtime, uh, so any Anything we want to add? We do have a $20 donation from Turtles that just says enjoying the run. I agree, it's been a fantastic time so far tonight. end up talking go back here and talk to Otto, give him the thunder rock and then he's gonna go hey thanks for the extra power i get to extend my rainbow road normally we would just walk out of here in any percent but we have some business here because we need to grab the mobius crest which is at this location yeah uh, mobius crest is what allows us to get to Captain Mac ship, which uh, we just freed from the ledge there. Just punch a few more walls. Yeah, we get to punch this one from a from a distance. Indeed. And we're going to see another <laughs> one of those uh, pretty soon. 
Here we have the Mobius Rust. Yep. And there's the Lever Crest reused again there back from we got it way long ago back with Phoebe. So now we get to go talk to Otto, or Kaylee saying, hey, we freed your ship. And she's going to go, here, take my dad's captain's hat. He'll know you're a friend. <laughs> and to think that this couple in this house has a teleport tile to the dock. It must be really annoying to allow people to just travel into your house to get access to the dock. At least they can visit each other, like, if they have the crusts. Yeah. Instead of walking through the focus tower. Here we want to see double enemies instead of uh, triple enemies. Uh, because we can just use uh, a combination of Flare and Ruben. Ruben with white or sometimes life. And mostly tanking. Yeah, and as mentioned yeah, earlier, it's, it's... Uh, there was also a use of thunder there, just because of how quick the animation is. Uh, it's something that uh, that Fumo has been dipping into that well a lot during the run. Is just what spells are most optimized from you know a, a time sequencing. So again, that lightning spell only having about a three quarter of a second cast time. Uh, is really, really good. Uh, that Doom Dance, unfortunately, on Ruben, not great, but Flare will uh, take out this fight anyway. Yeah, as we saw that the Thanatos decided to... Yeah, as we saw that the Thanatos decided to try to you know, hit us both with one sword swipe, but Ruben decided to go say, nope, I'm the only one taking damage. Getting some great encounters here on the on the ship. Yeah, no triples actually uh, on the ones that that can have really doubles. Matter. Yeah, like this one will always be a triple. Uh, it can come with a shadow, uh, which is a little annoying because it can self destruct. It can duplicate itself. A lot of nasty things. Yeah, the worst one to get the triple on is the one with the, uh, the Thanatos. Is it's a Thanatos, a Beholder, and a Manicor. So again, it's it's just the worst encounter out there. We pick up our Gaia armor, and we decide to say, hey, and Kaylee decided to come onto the ship. Nope. Oh. Ruben's still injured from his fall off the bridge. Yep, so you gotta take it down. Injuries are too severe to continue, so Phoebe will take place for the rest of the game. Yay, we got Phoebe back. And she's even more powerful than the last time. An extra spell, more HP, more spell counts. And she has a maximum uh, maxed out magic stat as well. Now we have some unfinished business uh, in the Fireberg area. Yeah, so we're going to reuse that Mobius Crest to great use as, there, as this town is actually linked up with Fireberg. So we get to just travel right back into Fireberg to... Go back to Volcano. And you get to enjoy the Volcano and Lava Dome music. Sorely missed, honestly, uh, because we haven't seen that since, uh, well, old 80%. And this is where Phoebe starts to really, uh, like, wreck faces, because her 
White spell at max uh, magic does so much damage that uh, it one-shots most of the enemies uh, in the Fireberg area. Yeah, in, in, in old 100% routing, when we didn't do the item underflow, uh, we'd actually have Benjamin with the white, and it was only if it was two targets were we able to take it out. <laughs> but now with Phoebe, we're able to just take on 10 fights in a row and then use a, uh, a seed. Yep, it's because uh, Phoebe's has a lot of wizard spell charges, but yeah, 10 is the limit. Uh, nice thing about some of the encounters here is uh, you can use auto, and if there's two enemies uh, that are weak to thunder, like the nightmares here, um, auto will take care of them. Yeah, so we, we're going to see some similar aspects as the uh, the ice pyramid coming up here, as it's quite uh, foggy on the climb up the mountain. Uh, so we're going to need to get something to be able to see through all this fog. Yeah, the big difference, though, is that Phoebe is uh, allowing us to just tear through these fights, whereas in the, uh, the ice pyramid, it was a bit more of a slog. Uh, you know, going through having to, to hit the birds and the mages and the squids. Uh, Phoebe just cast white and all your problems are solved here. There's actually a reason why we, why uh, Fumu did not go straight up the stairs there. We'll see why as soon as we uh, grab this gas mask and walk back down those stairs. Yep. And there we see the reason why. there's a nightmare in our way. If only we can actually bypass nightmares in real life like this that easily. Oh well. Yeah, as we see, all the enemies are not exactly in a linear spot. They're kind of just randomly all over here uh, to kind of keep the runner on their toes if they don't grab the gas mask. Yeah, this area has very peculiar enemy placements, uh, designed to be like a gotcha. This is where I was the entire time. <laughs> but we can at least easily uh, bypass them by just walking around them. Yeah, this is also though where one of the nicest safety features of any percent comes in versus, or excuse me, of 100% versus any percent as you do ultimately get the life spell by going through the uh, volcano, lava dome, etc. Uh, having access to the life spell on PB to J is huge because if your partner character dies, Phoebe, Tristam, you know, Kaylee, Ruben, etc., uh, you just have to hope you can finish out the fight. Really, really dangerous to do that. But picking up that life spell gives your, your primary character a whole lot more uh, in the way of helping to facilitate not dying and not wiping. So a huge pickup eventually will be coming on this mountain. First, we must get through our next boss, Medusa. Air quote boss uh, at this point. It's pretty nasty. <laughs> because she can inflict like, so many stats. Yeah, this, yes. this is not, this is not the cute Medusa. Now there's actually an interesting little bit of boss manipulation you can do with Medusa. Uh, if you open the fight with defend, uh, you can ensure that she actually uses a, uh, I think it's a muffle or a paralysis attempt or a petrify or confusion attempt, something on, uh, on PB to J. I forget the exact sequencing, but it keeps Phoebe from getting confused or petrified. Uh, I remember, you know, going through and, and taking the time to figure that out. It's pretty much not relevant, though, in, in the run, because as you see, Medusa's already dead in the time it took to explain that there is boss manipulation. I actually did not know about that, so that's very, very nice to know. You learn something new every day, uh, especially with speedruns. 
Yeah, it's it's unfortunately not faster, so it just got thrown out the window even after figuring that out. Yeah, so I think life is in this to, to right underflow. Here. I think once we're able to uh, figure out the underflow to, to go to Windia first and get PB2, uh, that boss manipulation just kind of went wayward side. Yeah. Like, if you were doing this normally, you'd have Ruben 1, and he's not particularly the best party member. Yeah, because his flail counts as an axe, which does extra damage against those, uh, turtles there. Ooh, so you get a treat. The blizzard spell. Uh, the snowman. Yeah, the best part about the uh, the Blizzard spell is the smile face. Uh, it's it's so great. I, I absolutely adore that animation. So we exit out because uh, the backtracking uh, is much slower uh, because we can just go to the other path because there's so many branches in the Lava Dome that it's faster to just start over from the beginning. Uh, to go to the other branch. Even though you do have to fight a few formations again. So our next objective is to grab the Moon Helm. And press a switch because uh, there is a big door that is blocking the way to the boss. And that switch is on this side of Lava Dome. Yeah, and once we hit the switch, uh, the door is always open. So we'll, we'll exit from there and then make the path down again. Yeah, and casually, this, this boss down here uh, absolutely wrecked me over and over again as a kid playing this. So it's nice to see it in, uh, in Hundo where uh, the advantage goes to the runner, finally. Uh, I had to do the seed thing, but oh well. I can do it in this one too. Uh, actually, that's fine. Because uh, I got too much speed. Sometimes you can have a little too much speed. Speaking of that, there is a one frame trick that's really detrimental because uh, sometimes you can menu too fast that uh, your cursor is on a particular spell you want to cast, but it actually doesn't cast the thing you want. So that's a little bit of an annoyance there. Actually, let's switch back to the bombs. All right, there we go. That's an accident. <laughs> we do not want to fight that formation. There we go. Moon Helm. So we've collected all the helmets, all the armors, all the accessories. We're just missing the shields now. Yep, there's only one inventory item left. Besides getting the actual vanilla sun coin location, which is at the end of this dungeon. Yep, and that would be the very famous Aegis Shield, uh, which confers us uh, uh, petrified protection. Yeah, at the end of the game is when you finally get petrification protection. good item to grab uh, if you're new to any percents because there's quite a few fights in Doom Castle that do inflict both paralysis and petrification. 
that it's only one single fight to get to the Aegis Shield. Yeah, it's not that far off the beaten path. So I mean, if you're, if you're learning, you know, the 80% run, it's definite, you can pick it up to help yourself out and then just kind of slowly move away from it. Yep, it depends on your comfort level uh, going into the final dungeon. Um, personally, I always uh, skip the Aegis Shield. Yeah, I think the, the Venus Shield is far more important than, than Aegis is. Uh, that, that Paralysis Resist just gives you so much more than the, the Petrify Resist uh, over the long haul, just because of where you pick it up. Yep. And here's that switch I mentioned earlier. We just need to press it once, and it opens the door permanently. Oops. And we're exiting out again because uh, we need to take another branch of the Lava Dome. This time to get to the big bad. Oh, oops. A little mistake there, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. so yeah, as we're, as we're re-walking re the path here, so I see um, Chad mentioning, uh, to confirm, yes, this uh, Final Fantasy Mystery Wars does use a, uh, a lot of the sprites from the Saga series, uh, primarily the Final Fantasy Legend uh, games that reuses a lot of the, the sprite data. Yep, even Good the enemy, for, uh, uh, HP states, they're like the Saga series. Good time for a quick donation. Yep, go right ahead. Yep. Uh, we have $25 from Kate with uh, no comment. Uh, I do also want to remind you all that uh, coming up after the Mystic Quest run, we do have Divinity Original Sin, and we do have uh, quite a few donation incentives for that run that probably will be locked once that run starts. So uh, we have choosing the main character's genders, which uh, currently you can choose whichever one you want because uh, the winning bid right now is $1. So anything beats that for the most part. Uh, we have naming the two main characters, and uh, so both of those have to be in probably at the start of the run, so you don't have a lot of time for that, so definitely want to get those donations in as soon as you can. Yeah, this is where uh, Phoebe's white spell isn't enough, so that's why we call upon PP2J's thunder spell to do the cleanup. Yeah, these, these, these monsters and I will have change a little bit which spells uh, which characters cast. Uh. Ooh, that's unfortunate on the turn order there. But yeah, I do change the spells that are cast because I want a specific order uh, to prevent uh, multiple enemy deaths in one battle. Yeah, and it's worth noting now that because of the, the extra speed from the sword and the extra speed from the levels on, uh, on PBDJ, that he's now at a point where he is going faster than Phoebe on some of these fights, uh, and that oftentimes will cause a headache uh, for Fumo. So it'll be interesting to see you know, what we get ordering-wise. Uh, there are some boss fights where if you can plan for that, it can actually be better to have PBDJ go first, but it's still a, a low-ish chance, uh, so it's not really reliable. But maybe if you're behind, you know, 30 seconds or a minute on a, a PB or, or world record run, it'd be something to try. Like, for some of these fights, uh, the order of which attacks come out doesn't matter, like this one. Uh, PB2J went first. Uh, it, the same results would happen if uh, Phoebe went first. Yeah, it probably comes into play if Phoebe is able to take out one of the monsters, therefore your spell is not split three ways, it's only split two for the damage calculation. That's when it majorly comes into play. Let's see if I can do something cute here. Look at Steve Lizard again. Ah, that's okay. 
but at least we got to see Blizzard again. It's such a cute spell. I mean, it's really not a good spell, but it has a smiley face, so it's the best spell. <laughs> exactly. Turning the frown upside down. Literally. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I end up grabbing Phoebe instead of doing Volcano with Ruben is having the 10 wizard spells versus the 7 and the extra magic stats for the rest of this uh, particular area with Phoebe is just a, a, a real nice thing to have. As we progress through, uh, the fights are pretty much the same, so we'll have a little bit of downtime. Only when we actually get into the final room with the twin-headed hydra do we get an extra encounter of the dogs. Running low on uh, spell charges. So, if there's encounters that I know I can finish with with PB2J, I will definitely try to use uh, Phoebe's turn. This next one is an excellent opportunity. Yeah, I'm going to do a real fast. great job being able to keep being able to keep track of how many spells you have at, at any given time. That is something that, uh -oh. that takes a lot of practice to do. Ah, uh, I made a mistake there. That's okay. In fact, uh, Phoebe needs to be cured as well. I also Ooh. noticed that uh, PB2J's magic was out, so might as well seat both of them. No harm there. Basically, the only time you get to look at the the quantity of spells remaining is either when you're in you're in your inventory uh, like Fumo is right now, or if you are in the spell menu in battle. But oftentimes, you are menuing so rapidly, uh, at least at the highest levels of this, that it's almost impossible for the human eye to catch what your spell count remaining is. So you kind of have to keep mental track of where you are. Uh, on that kind of spell list. And yeah, to Tibalt's point, Fumo's been doing a phenomenal job of keeping track of all of that. Now, the other thing that really isn't noticed in, and people that speed runners that know this, any single time there's a text box that comes up in battle, you actually have to press a button to make it disappear faster. So at the end of the battle, when it tells you, you found gold, you got experience, you, you won the fight, who was actually spamming all the buttons and the directional pad to get through those text boxes as quickly as possible. So now we're at the big bad, the dual head Hydra. So I've mapped out uh, exactly how much uh, spells I need to cast. So it's two meteors and two whites from PBTJ. Uh, boosted with the claw, because the claw gives extra magic stats. Yeah, this is a particularly interesting fight. It's a little different than every other fight in the game in the sense that while the two heads are up on the screen, uh, the dragon here, the twin head hydra, can use a fire breath spell, or a dual head hydra, excuse me. Uh, that Fire Breath spell is very, very scary for Phoebe in particular. Um, and it can also crit. Uh, and if that crits, it can one-shot Phoebe. Uh, usually not as much of an issue in the, in the 100% run. But to my knowledge, there's no other boss that reacts like that, where based on the number of heads remaining on the, the boss, uh, it actually has a different course of action that it can take. Uh, so it's a, it's a really neat one from a design perspective. Very well done there by Fumo, and uh, got through that. Phoebe just 
Barely staying alive, but very well done on Fubo. Thank you. And now we're at the home stretch. Let's collect the Sun Coin. And let us be on our way wait, to Doom Castle. Wait, what's. I, I thought we had Phoebe. What's Ruben doing here? <laughs> yeah, those good points. Well, the story triggers don't exactly change uh, depending on who your partner is. Like, as you saw, Ruben always shows up. And in any percent, you see Ruben just suddenly appear out of nowhere when you're at the bridge. Now we go back into Fireburg. We get to use our Movius Crest. Well, uh, second to last time here. Use it one more time to get to the to the actual ship. Then we're on. We have time for a couple quick donations home. while we're uh, yep. moving around some towns. You can go right ahead. All right, we have uh, anonymous five dollar donation. We have a fifteen dollar donation from Infinius with no comment. We have a $97 donation from Jason LaRose saying, This donation goes to naming one of the main characters Lumi in celebration of Lumi and you getting the Divinity 2 world record earlier this evening. Very awesome to hear. Oh, that's awesome. So, once again, we do have Divinity Original Sin coming up after this run. Uh, we have lots of fun incentives for that, so definitely go check those out. Uh, Whenever you do your donation at rpglumbreak.com slash donate, you just got to choose which uh, incentive you want to put it towards. We have choosing the main character's genders, naming the two main characters, and uh, I believe both those probably will have to lock very early in the run. So you need to get those in ASAP if you want to have any influence over that run. All right, I got the optimal movement to get to the Aegis Shield. That's very hard to do. And uh, I'm going to ask for one more check on the HP display and the menu color. All right, let me give it one last refresh just to, to make sure. Menu color is still blue with $40. And the HP digits is done on figure. All right, so... Now that we've got everything, let's check that we have everything indeed. All the spells, all the key items, all the armors, all the weapons. Yep, everything has been collected. So now, all that's left is to beat the game. Yeah, and there's something, something special about this particular focus tower as it's a, uh, it's a redux. We have refights of all four bosses we had to take out so it's a it's a reborn flamus a reborn ice golem a reborn dual-headed hydra and reborn zuzu however the first oh, two some bosses, of the fights. yeah <laughs> yeah the first two are actually relatively weak as uh, we are able to really do some shenanery here um as Skull Rex here is actually weak both to life and exit. Yeah, the interesting... Yeah, I think the flags were not set on both Stone Golem and Skull Rex. Yeah, and the interesting thing is even f going, you know, quite a bit further back, uh, Flamerous Rex should, in theory, be able to be, be lifed. Uh, but Tristam's life is broken. And so it doesn't work. And so that's why you can use life here, but not back at the 10 minute mark of the run. Yeah, both Tristam and Ruben ones uh, life are like that, to my knowledge. Not Ruben twos, which is a little weird. Some more interaction with, you know, Punch the buttons, much like we did in the Pyramid, so it's use our sword to hit a switch, and a lot of the fights in here are kind of reminiscent of some of the fights from the uh, location. So we got the squid, we've got the crab, and yes, we have some of the newer enemies we've come across, but 
A lot of the older ones to tend to show up in these redux locations. As well as the aesthetic of the location we're in also brings us back to, hey, this is what Pyramid looked like. Or this is what Volcano looked like. Notice I was out of spells for PB2J. We have to hit we those did. switches in that order. <laughs> Otherwise, you'd be trapped or you wouldn't be able to progress. It's a little bit of a maze. Yeah, and it, it was, it was, once we got Phoebe 2 from, from Windia, when did Volcano, as we started coming up the uh, Doom Castle here, everything is starting to come back full into the fold of. Okay, now things are kind of getting a bit more tricky. Yes, we're able to, you know, life or exit the first two bosses, but after that, the you know, the Redux fight for Twin-Headed Hydra, or yeah, it's Twin-Headed Wyvern, I believe, in this one, and then Zuh, it gets more, it gets right back into that high difficulty stage of things can go sideways very, very quickly. Yep. So those, uh, dark areas, we actually can't fall through them. So uh, there's nowhere to actually go back to, even though they should go back to the first floor. Yeah, there's but only one area that you're able to fall down, and that's in the... Yeah, the, the, the fourth area they're mean because you can fall down. And we use that to great effect. And this particular fight here with the stone golem and the dogs is, uh, even though they that this is cheesable, um, you can still wipe to this fight. The exit could miss. You could have a giant stone block dropped and crit on your uh, your PB to J character here. Uh, the dogs can confuse. They can petrify. It's just a really nasty fight. Thankfully, it cooperated, and uh, Fuma was able to get through it. But that one, even though it's air quotes free is very not free. Yeah, you can get stuck uh, against Stolen Golem very, very easily. Like, you'd be surprised on uh, how many people uh, are stuck there. Like, I've been stuck there for at least, like, five to seven minutes before. Just because uh, all the bad luck keeps happening. Yeah, I mean, yeah. kind of goes back to the, you know, something we said earlier that there's basically no perfect runs. Like, you almost always encounter something that kills you along the way. Um, I think that even the, the current world records and, and, you know, your PBs, there's still minutes to save. Yeah, usually because uh, something did go wrong. Uh, because of bad luck. Yeah. Not so much execution. Yeah, I, I tend to feel that there's like kind of like a push and pull with this with this game where it's just like, okay, you know, you start just going, you know, things are starting going bad, and it's like, okay, well, I'm no longer on PB pace, and then you come up to a, like crab, and the crab just goes amazingly well, and then you're all of a sudden back on PB pace. You're like, what? <laughs> Make up your mind, game. You gonna let me be on PB pace or not? <laughs> It is a very exciting part about uh, this game, is the constant back and forth as the game decides your fate. Mm. Next is the refight of uh, the fire area. This time it's Twin Head Wyvern. Or, if you're playing Final Fantasy V on the mm. PlayStation 1, why dash burn? Yeah, and this place is where it gets start, it's so it's silly. Where it gets really, really dangerous here because you have the AOE fire, you have the AOE poison. That it, it, just a lot of damage happens, and so you got to be kind of careful on your HP totals in this fight. 
At least we do have life. Yes. Which makes it a lot it... safer. Yeah, I don't think it was ever mentioned because it never really came up, but not only does the life do a full heal, it also does a full heal in the aspect of healing your status ailments. So Phoebe being poisoned here, we don't have to cast the life spell on, or the heal spell on her. We can just cast life. It'll full heal her and get rid of the poison. Yeah, we did see that fire spell uh, coming out on Phoebe, and uh, then she got dunked by a physical hit also. So kind of a bit of a scary situation there. Uh, just barely able to save the fight, uh, at least at this point. But this is one of those things that, you know, Tibalt kind of said, the, the difficulty ramps up a little. Uh, this fight really proving it, that that was 142 HP from a, a restart on this fight. So even with this route, even with these levels, still not free by any means. Yep, thankfully we do have life. Uh, that did save us back there. If this was any percent, uh, we would have been fighting the Twin Head again. And we also also want to note that the Fire Breath that Twin Head could do, uh, the critical hit one-shots Phoebe at full HP. So that's something to be very aware of as well. Yeah, I think a crit takes her out by like 4 HP or something like that. It's, it's really, really savage when it happens. Uh, she takes like 1,484 damage or some nonsense, and it's like, really? Did, did we have to program it this way? Uh, just one more kick, you know? <laughs> and something to note in, in this particular quest. section. Yeah, something to note in this area with the stairs, we're actually able to skip a fight with how the stairs interact with the world. And it's only really viable in this location as we're able to skip a fight. And it's actually one of the more dangerous fights in this location as it's the dogs. As they can That's Doom Breath you, Quake, fine. Fire. That Petrify was unfortunate, but still managed to get through it. Because we have the white spell, uh, normally in some formations we use meteor in any percent, but because white does the same damage, we use it over meteor because uh, the animation time. It's it's so good. Yeah, meteor being the longest animation spell, I believe at about three and a half seconds, maybe even a little more than that. Uh, it just takes so dang long to cast. So things like flare, things like white. Uh, and obviously Thunder, which we've mentioned a couple times, uh, far, far superior from a spell cast time. Uh, if we don't have to use Meteor, there's no reason to use Meteor. Here's one instance where I will use White for both characters. Normally this fight, I would say, is the worst formation in the game. Because, like... Uh, the Thanatos here can cure uh, from Phoebe's White because the enemies are knocked down to uh, critical-ish HP. Yeah, and the thing with the Thanatos also is they can cure not just themselves, but also their allies. So in particular, if it cures the Chimera, uh, it's kind of awkward because it's resistant to a lot of the different elements. So... Uh, it's smart to just be able to take them out as best you can with whatever you can. Oh. Gets to skip that service because of the tile placements. If we do get that uh, double Thanatos in a Cerberus uh, formation, um, I do like using Thunder first because it, Phoebe's Thunder does enough damage, but not enough damage to put the Thanatos in critical 
so they don't uh, heal as a result, or cure themselves as a result. Uh, this is a perfect uh, showcase. Although the uh, it can backfire, but I that's a risk I'm willing to take. Right, Here is our second jerk bird. Zuzu. Less HP than the Zuzu, but uh, much deadlier. Yeah, and also yeah, has some friends scarier, that are actually. way yeah, scarier too. Yeah, this is where we end up. We hope that uh, Za ends up using that side shield right there. That is what we consider to be a an empty turn. It only does like you know one to two damage, and we don't have to worry about healing. The more time he does that, the better. I got very lucky on a turn order there. Uh, because on any time that uh, Pazuzu uses Psych Shield, um, it will always go last. So we can use that to our advantage to recover. Yeah, the scariest thing is always when Zoo or Pazuzu, either one of them, gets to go second and then immediately goes first again without you being able to kind of interact. Uh, that that kind of leaves you ripe for for the pickings, if you will. Uh, it can easily get double petrified, double doom dance. Lots of bad stuff can can be a, a result of that. But Fumo uh, able to get through this fight pretty well so far. Uh, shouldn't be but a couple more spells away. Yeah, as we just have the instant Orsa. just laying down and gone. And this would be a great time for any last-minute donations uh, or anything else that uh, would need to be said before the end of the run. Yeah, one quick thing, actually, is unfortunately I hit level 26. It does make the final fight a little slower, uh, but there is a few tricks that we use for that final fight. It involves uh, overflowing. Yeah, so this boss fight generally uh is pretty quick. But yeah, do you need any donations in? Uh, real quick, we have a $98 donation from Jason LaRose, who said, Once more, with the actual incentive applied this time. This donation goes to naming one of the main characters, Lumi, in celebration of Lumi and you getting the Divinity Tier World Record earlier this evening. So once again, thank you all for your generous donations towards such a fantastic cause. By the way, time is on the final hit. Uh, Dark King has 40,000 HP, but because he has too much HP, when we cast Cure on Dark King, it actually damages him. So now he's two attacks away. Yeah, that 1800 roll there was actually uh, the, the number you want to have. So... As you see here, he'll go into another phase here, and then it's just going to be a player in a white that will take him out. White from Phoebe and a flare from Phoebe to J. Or Torch Swing. Yeah. Very Dep well run, GG's Fumo. That was time there. Yes, thank you so much. And so that old man that can tell us we we're gonna be a hero? Oh. I actually like Crystal. Who'd a thunk? And overall, uh, a 246 for a marathon, uh, honestly incredible. And that was with floor four. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. I'm very happy with uh, this run. Um, I apologize for all the technical inf uh, issues I encountered, including uh, no camera. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, tech really didn't uh, work in my favor. But I, I truly apologize uh, for that. But I'm grateful that I'm able to showcase 100% uh, uh, for RPG Limit Break, Final Fantasy Mystic Quest.
Yeah, thank you to NAMI for uh, for all y'all do. Uh, amazing foundation once again. Uh, you know, thank you, Puma, for having me on the couch. Uh, thanks, Tibalt, for uh, for keeping <laughs> us honest here as well and providing your insight. And uh, thank you, RPG Limit Break, for my first experience here. This has been absolutely amazing to be on site for it. Uh, really cool to see all the behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, I would love love to hug the giant Piplup there. <laughs> yeah, the the J Hobbs Piplup is uh, rather adorable, as everybody <laughs> knows. Yeah, I'll, I'll second. You know, thanks to RPG Limit Break for allowing us to be here. Th you know, thanks to Fumu for allowing me to be on the the couch. This is like one of my first big marathons as a as a on the couch for something. So I'm. I'm been nervous this entire time uh, but also thanks to RPG Lyric for allowing us to do this yep thank you so much for uh, being here uh, commentating with me and with that I will sign off uh, thank you so much again to everyone and enjoy the rest of the marathon alrighty Let's get one last round of applause in the uh, the chat for Fuma Fuma Mailing. What a fantastic run of Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. Uh, we're going to go on a short break in just a little bit, I believe, while we get set up for the next run. Uh, but that will also do it for me. So I want to say, you know, once again, thank you to all of you for hanging out during the late night RPG limit break. Uh, and... I believe I will be passing it off to my good friend, Ghost Kumo, who will be taking over for Divinity and for uh, Trails in the Sky. Don't go anywhere.